In this exercise, we'll be building a moon that can orbit around a planet to demonstrate how to use custom draw rules. We'll do everything from scratch, including the design, rig, and animation. Let's start by changing the background color of our artboard. Since this is going to be taking place in space, we want to have a darker background, so I'm going to choose a dark purple. The next thing to do is build our planet. To do that, we're going to use the ellipse tool, which we can find in the create tools menu, or you can hit the O key. That'll activate the tool and you can hold shift and then click and drag out your planet. We can then use the align tools to center our ellipse on the artboard. At this point, the way that you decorate your planet is up to you. For me, I'm just going to change the color to purple and then use the pen tool to create some stripes on my planet to make it look more like a gas planet. Now that I've got my stripes created, I need to change the color. So I'll select the shape and change it to a nice red color. And then you'll notice that I have all of this excess area that hangs over my lips. Well, we can fix that by using the clipping option. So I'll hit the plus button next to clip, select my ellipse, and then all that excess color is clipped to the ellipse, which makes the planet look a lot nicer. Now that we've got the planet created, we need to make a group. So I'm gonna marquee select everything on the artboard. And because I'm on Mac, I'm gonna use Command G. And if I was on Windows, I'd use Control G, and that will group our planet into a group. And then we can rename it and call it Planet. Now I'm realizing I don't want my bands going up and down like this. I actually want them going horizontal. So I'm also just going to rotate the planet slightly and that looks a lot better. Now we need to create something that can orbit around the planet. So I'm going to make a moon, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and lock my planet so that it's not getting in my way since I'll be creating something different. Now, once again, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. So hit O and that activates the tool. I'm going to hold shift and then drag out a smaller ellipse than my planet and then change the fill to white. Now we can do a little decorating on the moon. So I'm just going to zoom in here and put a couple craters on it using ellipses. And I'm going to use pretty much the same ellipse. And then every time I move it, I'm going to scale it down and then hit command D, which will duplicate the shape and then rescale that ellipse and then do it again until I have enough uh, ellipses on here that I'm happy with how my moon looks. Okay, I'm happy with the moon. So now we need to do the same thing we did for the planet for the moon. We just need to group everything. So I'm gonna marquee select all of those objects and then hit command G and that's going to wrap all those up into a group. And then I'm going to rename this moon. There's two more things that we need to do before moving on. The first is to create another group for all of the objects on our artboard. And we're going to call this our root group. The reason we make a root group is so that after we've added animation keys, we can always go back and control the scale, the rotation, or the position of our entire composition without worrying about how it might affect our animation. Now, the last thing we need to do is ensure that we can put our moon behind our planet during the animation. And so that's going to require a custom draw rule. So to do that, I've got my moon group selected and I'm going to hit the plus button next to draw order. And that's going to give us this new draw rule that we can configure. And I'm going to call this behind planet. So we know what it does. And then we can open this little dialog box here and go ahead and configure the draw rule. So we want to make sure that we're going below our target and then we need to pick a target. So I'm going to hit this button and then go into my planet group and select the uh, lowest shape in that group, which is this ellipse. Now you'll see that that ellipse pops up here as our target. And when we switch our draw order to the new draw order, as soon as we move the moon over, you'll notice that it's now behind the planet. And if we change it back to normal, it'll respect our hierarchy, which puts it in front of the planet. At this point, we're ready to hop into our animation and create this orbit. To get to animate mode, we can either hit the toggle up here at the top or hit tab. And that's going to bring us directly into animate mode. 
Now I've already got the timeline selected and I'm going to hit F so that my artboard fills the uh, remaining stage and we can start working on this animation. The first thing I'm going to do is extend my timeline and I'm going to give myself about three seconds to work with so that way we can have a slower orbit around the planet. Now the only keys that I need to set to actually make this orbit happen is X position keys, some scale keys, and then obviously we'll need to animate our draw order at some point. So let's start with the X keys. Let's create a key for the initial position here. So I'm just going to hit the X uh, key button. And then I'm going to go halfway down the timeline and move my moon to the other side. And then I'm going to copy this first key and paste it at the end of the timeline. Now that's all we need to get the uh, movement of the planet looking correct. We also want to change our interpolation so that we get some acceleration and deceleration for the planet, which will make the motion look a lot better. We can also switch our playback from one shot to loop so that we're creating a looping animation. Now we need to add some draw order keys. What we're going to do is have the moon move in front of the planet, and then when it gets to this side, it's going to go behind the planet. So let's set those draw order keys accordingly. So let's first set a key for the normal draw order, and you notice how I toggled back and forth, and that's just to make sure that I set that normal draw roll key. And then when the planet gets to the other side, and as soon as it clears the planet, so about here, we're going to key our behind planet uh, draw rule. And now when it goes back to the other side, we're going to rekey our normal draw rule. And now we've got our moon orbiting the planet. To make this animation look even fancier, what we're going to do is add in some scale keys to the moon so that as the moon gets closer to the camera, it gets bigger. And as it gets farther away, it gets smaller. That'll help really sell that 3D effect. To do that, the first thing that we're going to do is give ourselves some extra time. So I'm going to give myself eight seconds on the timeline. We're going to zoom out a little bit and then scoot the keys over somewhere like here. Now I need to enable the work area and line up the starting and ending position of the work area with my first and last keys and I can zoom in to make sure that I've got those set right. All right, both of those look good. And now what we're going to focus on is setting keys for the largest and smallest size that our moon can be. And we're just going to do those in line with these keys. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, all right, 150% on the X and 150% on the Y is the biggest that my moon's going to get. And then the smallest it's going to get is 0% and 0%. And I'm going to copy this key, paste it over here so that I completed the loop, and then add cubic interpolation. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is copy this loop and paste it one more time so we have two of the same loop. The next thing we need to do is establish where exactly our moon is at the largest point and drag our keys so that it actually fits. So about right here is where our moon's supposed to be the largest. And this is the key that we want to align with that because it's the largest key. I'm going to go ahead and delete that since it's way beyond the work area and line it up here like so. And then when it goes behind, so this is where it'd be the smallest. It's at the smallest point. And then about here and here, it's relatively uh, a normal size. So now when we watch the playback, you can see that the moon gets smaller as it goes behind and bigger as it goes in front. So just to recap everything we did, the first thing we did was change the color of our artboard. Then we created our planet, grouped our planet, then created our moon, grouped our moon, created a root group. And then we created a custom draw rule for our moon. Then we came to animate mode, animated the X position of our moon, and then we animated the draw rules. And then finally added in our scale keys so that we could create 3D effect.